I'm going to go ahead and uh, call this my definitive color grading how-to an introduction to uh, the tool that if you aren't using, I'm going to tell you to use Blend If. And if you're already using it, I'm going to tell you how to use it uh, even more effectively. Because Blend If is the basis of everything I do. Color grading, creating detail, creating shadow. It's all Blend If adjustment layers and layer modes. I use Blend If in a bunch of weird ways that no one else seems to do. Uh, so it's time I pull back the curtain at least a little. If you don't know who I am, I'm Abby Esparza, a creative compositor with about 10 years of experience, and if you don't know where you are, you're tuned into photomanipulation.com. So let's take a look at this color grade. Uh, the most important thing to know about how I personally color grade is that I do it right at the beginning of the inception of the image. My images start with a primary color grade, which then grows and changes with the image. Now, I will happily create another cute crying girl to show you this uh, exact makeup effect. If you're itching to learn now though, in the description are links to different tutorials that I've already done that cover everything you need to know, especially the e-girl makeup tutorial. So before we talk about Blend If, we have to cover the basics of my color grading. No boring definitions, don't worry. You can break 85% of my color grades down into just three tools. Adjustment layers, blending modes, uh, slash opacity, and blend if. So let's talk adjustment layers. My favorites are color lookup, selective color, curves, and hue saturation. My secondaries are brightness contrast, levels, and gradient maps. And my rarities, well, yeah, I use them sometimes are color balance and vibrance. You can then break those down into three categories, ones that adjust color, those that adjust brightness and contrast, and the ones that do both. This is a good place to start to get to know when you want to use what and where, uh, but once we throw layer modes into the mix, things become less straightforward, but let's not get ahead of ourselves. There's nothing exceptional about these adjustments. I just happen to prefer them. They're a great place to start if you don't already heavily use adjustment layers. What I'm saying is the exact settings do not matter. They never matter. The technique is what matters, and the technique is that I place a bunch of adjustment layers right at the top of my layer stack to create a dynamic color grade that I can change as I go. The only outlier here is gradient maps because we can choose our colors specifically and they rely heavily on layer modes. So if we take a peek here, what will we see? Pastel blue, pink, and yellow, the color scheme for this particular image. That color scheme is chosen at the beginning of the image, kept in mind throughout. We see inner clothes, makeup, and sky. I've mentioned in my previous videos how I always recommend you have a predetermined color scheme in mind right at the start of your image. And then gradient maps are a great way to reinforce that specific color scheme through your color grade. So let's look at the naked gradient map. So I'm going to remove the blend if settings, layer mode, and everything. This gradient map brings blues into the darks, purples and pinks into the midtones, and yellow into the lights. I prefer cooler colors to be in the shadows and warmer ones to be in the highlights, so when I make a gradient map, that's how I tend to place my colors. That's not a steadfast rule, just how I tend to do things, and so you can go ahead and try that out as well, if you don't know where to start. So let's talk about layer modes. This layer was originally set to multiply. Multiply is in the Darken category, because fun fact, layer modes are split into categories. Darken, Lighten, Contrast, Inversion, and Component. No one cares about the inversion group, so just forget about that. A component is hue, saturation, and brightness. These are the components that make up color, hence the name. So Multiply is in the Darken group, and so it darkens. Multiply also mixes the hues of all the colors below it and the layer color itself together. This makes it great for introducing color or your specific color scheme into your shadows. So Multiply should live in your head as the layer for shadows. Multiply equals shadows. Now because of this, it kills your highlights, which is what we want when painting or introducing shadows, right? But we're talking about color grading and affecting the global darks of an image. So we want our highlights back. We could lower the opacity, of course. This gives us an almost retro vibe, a very late 90s, early 2000s, but I want my bright highlights back. Let's bring this to 100% opacity and finally talk about Blend If. 
the star of the video and the secret sauce to my images at least. So blend the if is in the layer style panel, double click the layer to open that, and it's right here at the bottom. For color grading, you're only going to focus on the underlying layer settings. This box is based on values, which is black to gray to white. Think of your image, but grayscale. The black, gray, and whites are your values. This gradient represents those values. So blend if is simple. If you want to blend away from the lighter values, use the white toggles here. So this layer will now blend away from the lighter values below itself. Then you use the black toggles if you want to blend away from the darker values. We hold Alt to then split the toggles, giving you a smoother blend between the stopping and starting points. The toggle halves closest to the ends are your stopping points, while the inner toggle halves are your starting points. So this end half says that this layer will not be seen on any value past this point. This inner half says that this layer will be seen in all the values past this point. When we split the toggles, we create a gradient in the values between the two toggles. This layer will go from not being seen to being completely seen in the length of these two toggles. So if it's a short distance, the blend will be harsh. It needs to get from point A to point B over fewer values. If we stretch the toggles, the layer can slowly start to appear over a greater range of values. I want the whites in my highlights back, so I'm going to make sure this layer is completely blended away from the white values. All my gradient maps happen to be uh, blended away from the lighter values for this image because I wanted the lightest values to remain a pale creamy white and not lean too yellow. But if we look at my color lookup layer here, it has a LUT that gives a brightening effect, so I removed it from the shadows. In fact, I only wanted this layer to affect the brightest of the bright values, so I removed it from most of the midtones as well. Now I don't want you to overly focus on where I'm placing these toggles, instead you just want to understand what they're doing. Blend if is entirely visual, it'll change from image to image and there are no magic settings. In fact, if we drop this color grade group onto a new image, even one I think is at least slightly similar, it looks horrible. And that's because color grades are bespoke, one of a kind, tailor made to fit the image it's on. At least mine are. I've tried to cut corners and reuse a grade before, and it just rarely ever works unless that image is part of the same series. And even then, remember, my color grades rely heavily on the adjustments I've made to the elements underneath the grade. It's a dynamic, ever-changing color grade. So exact settings do not matter. As I said, I use Blendif constantly. We talked about color grades but it's incredibly powerful for preserving and creating detail. Seen here in the lip color layer to preserve the highlights of the natural lip. Uh, this is one solid color, set to multiply with a blend if setting. That blend if setting removed the layer from the brightest highlights to give me this lip shine. I want to point out how simple this layer really is. If we look at my dodge and burn layers, a blend if is removing the burn from my highlights. The blend if setting keeps the burn layers contained to a specific range of dark values, so I can burn without worrying about my highlights being darkened, and vice versa. That same thing goes for the dodge layer and brighter values. This is essentially a very precise way to add contrast. That contrast doesn't create detail, but it enhances the natural detail that already exists. Skin is the best example I have for this. I'll often uh, target the brightest values of the skin pores so I can dodge them to be brighter. Or even more often, I'll target everything but the lightest points of the skin texture, making everything darker, giving that texture the appearance of being brighter, creating a really intense skin detail. Uh, hello, this is Abby After Dark. 
I just want to point out, if it's not clear what's happening here, is that uh, this is an example of how I target the brightest points of the skin pores, as well as the shadows using various different dodge and burn layers. Notice that dodge and burn doesn't necessarily mean curves. I consider anything that darkens a burn layer and anything that highlights a dodge layer. You'll notice that some of those highlight layers are even just normal layers, literally white paint that are solely located in the highest points of the pores, giving you that very high shine skin effect. Blendiff is also in charge of creating all the little specular highlights on the eyelids, giving a greasy eyelid effect. This is what I mean when I say Blendiff is the secret sauce. All of these layers are incredibly simple. Make sure you double check the layer mode and the opacity when I click through these. It's literally Blendiff doing everything. Just wanted to add that in. Let's hop back into this uh, crying image here. Another key way I use Blendiff is to give texture to overlaid details. Uh, so, seen here in my eyeliner effect, I brought back some of the darker skin detail so the makeup would appear less flat. Blend If is integral to painted or makeup effects uh, because it brings in skin's natural texture that mimics how actual makeup or paint uh, lays on the skin. Paint or eyeliner is a very thin substance that is layered over a textured surface, that textured surface in this case being skin. And while we're here, we can see that that blend if is also great for placing details behind other finer details. Blend if does a great job of making sure the liner looks behind the lashes, not overlapping. I could have hand masked that, but that would have been less precise and less flexible. Thanks to the blend if setting, I, I can adjust the placement of this liner and it'll always appear behind the lashes. I don't have to remask or adjust masks. And that's because it's based on values. This layer will always be blended away from the dark values of the lashes. I want to mention that I like using references for stuff like this. I want to give a big shout out to this makeup artist for uh, the cloudy cheek idea. Super cute. Using references will also help keep a balance of style to realism for photo compositing. And Blend If is my primary tool for doing just that, because I can use the portrait's natural detail and texture to my advantage, mixing and blending fake elements with real. You'll often see people do the opposite, where they try and remove or overly smooth an image so the added elements and the original image all share that same really smoothed out uh, post-processing or they layer on lots and lots of artistic uh, textures over the image to bring in a more global detail. So detail that covers the whole image. I technically do that too when I add grain to an image. But in general, I go for what I call a, a true texture, meaning I want to be able to imagine what this texture, object, or detail literally would feel like if I touched it in real life. There's no right or wrong, but that's how I go about uh, rendering my images. So the takeaway here is that Blendif does precisely what's in the name. Blendif blends if it's within a certain set of values. I also like to use the term melt because Blendif melts the layer into the layer below it. We wanted the blush to melt onto the skin, the same with the lips and the highlight, the shadows. We want these things to meld together and interact. We even want the eyeliner to melt onto the eyelid to some degree, like it has physical texture and like I said, it's interacting with what's below it. I talk a lot about the idea of true texture in my upcoming uh, Dark Surrealism Masterclass course, which is getting so close to being finished, but just isn't quite there yet. It's going to be the absolute best thing I've ever done, I'm already so proud of it. Every delay has only resulted in it getting better. I'm so excited for people to actually finally see it. No proper release date yet, because honestly, I just get very nervous about that. Um, I don't want to sound cocky, but you guys are literally going to love it, guaranteed. But for today, remember you can see a lot of these techniques broken down in my e-girl inspired makeup tutorial linked here, both for the makeup effect and a ton of blend if talk. Other than that, uh, like if you like, subscribe if you really like. I'm Abby Esparza with photomanipulation.com. I'll see you next time, guys. I'm also hoping to fix my lighting situation so I don't look like an anime villain the entire time. <laughs>